Flash storage generally and flash only arrays are completely disrupting the storage business and everybody knows it. What's happened is the consumer grade flash has entered into the enterprise and organizations, companies, vendors have figured out ways to make that flash more reliable. As costs come down and performance improves, practitioners are starting to find ways to utilize flash that are driving massive productivity improvements. We've got a span of flash implementations from server-side flash and memory extensions to PCIe cards to flash-only arrays to hybrid arrays. And it's completely changing the positioning of the traditional storage hierarchy. Last week was Flash Week. Today is March 12th, Tuesday, and we're here at Wikibon headquarters. I'm Dave Vellante, and we're going to squint through some of those announcements. I'm here with David Floyer, who's Wikibon CTO, coming to us from uh, uh, Mountain View, California. David, can you hear me? I can indeed. Well, thanks very much for taking some time and, and joining us. As I was saying in my introduction, last week we saw uh, an, uh, announcements from Violin, Virident weighed in, uh, EMC had a huge flash announcement, uh, Fusion IO had some announcements, and uh, this market is really heating up, isn't it? it absolutely. Uh, we've been talking about it since, ever since EMC uh, announced uh, Haymaker back in uh, 2008, and it's, it's really coming to a boil, and uh, the, the real changes that we predicted are happening very, very fast indeed. Yeah, they really are, and you've pointed out a number of times that the, the mechanical spinning disk is the last bastion of performance bottlenecks and, uh, you know, electromechanical component of computers, and, and as that uh, wall and that barrier begins to, to be uh, pulled down, we're seeing massive improvements in application performance, and everybody wants a piece of that pie. Now, you wrote a piece of uh, uh, flash only arrays in full gallop. Uh, Stu's going to put that up here. Thank you, Stu. Uh, and, and you did a very detailed analysis of that marketplace. You can see here it's on Wikibon, wikibon.org, all free content as usual. Really outstanding analysis. And uh, Stu, if you could scroll down, you, you analyzed the uh, EMC's announcement, the Extreme IO uh, piece of it. You gave your opinion. Now, what happened was a website called Seeking Alpha picked up on your piece and uh, actually wrote a piece uh, quoting you or implying that it was quoting you. Stu's going to bring that up here. Uh, and the, the title of the piece is EMC's flash storage refresh is more bark than bite, argues Wikibon CTO David Floyer. So I got to ask you, is that what you're arguing here? Did you actually make that comment to Seeking Alpha? I never talked to Seeking Alpha. Uh, and I certainly didn't make that comment. And I certainly do, it doesn't reflect my views. Uh, it was a very solid announcement. The Extreme IO piece of it, the All Flash Array, was a very solid announcement. I mean, clearly it's not yet in full GA, and it doesn't have all of the, of the uh, bells and whistles that are going to be required for uh, full uh, enterprise adoption. But it's, it's driving down that route very fast. and. Uh, it's, a, it's a, a, a very sound, strong implementation. And even more important, EMC has the, uh, the sales force, it has the technical force, it has the, uh, the megaphone, uh, and it has the worldwide reach. Uh, and it will do extremely well with this product, in my view. Uh, and it's coming in a little bit late, but uh, it's uh, it, 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 in a horse race. Uh, it's certainly not past the, uh, the first furlong. So, a furlong is an eighth of a mile for those uh, of you who don't know horse racing. Uh, and so, David, let me ask you, does the announcement have more bite than bark, in your opinion, specifically the Extreme I.O. announcement? The Extreme I.O. has a lot of uh, bite, absolutely. Um, it's uh, it's uh, a good, solid implementation. It, uh, it, it, it uses... Uh, a, 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 an enclosure full of uh, PCIe driven, not PCIe driven, sorry, flash driven uh, SSDs. It's got two very powerful servers uh, driving it, and it's held, it, it's uh, scale outable, it's uh, held together with uh, 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 InfiniBand. It's a good construction, and uh, I, I, personally believe they're going to be even more successful with this product than they ever believe. It's going to go into places they, they haven't even dreamed of. It's going to go into small organizations. It's going to go into research organizations. It's going to be everywhere. So, And, and with the advantages they have of their 
share of the marketplace and their share of the uh, of the channel, etc. I think uh, it, it's the product to w watch in this space. Now, I just want to set the record straight, so we'll come back and talk about some of that, but the Seeking Alpha article had some uh, factual uh, errors that also were attributed to you. Um, you never wrote that uh, that EMC's PCI, so they not only announced the flash-only array, but they announced the enhancements to their PCIe uh, uh, flash uh, card, and, and the Seeking Alpha article said that it was a read-only card. Uh, first of all, is that true, and did you say that? <laughs> it's, it's absolutely not true. Having a, a flash card that c can't be read to is, is, is an oxymoron. Or written to, you uh, mean. You mean written to. Written yeah. to, yeah, yeah. sorry. <laughs> written to is an oxymoron. So, yeah, clearly it's a, it's a good, ordinary flash card. You read to it, you write to it. Whatever you do with a flash card, you need to be able to read and write. So, uh, I... I I, I clearly didn't say that, uh, and um, it's not a very good reflection on the person writing it that anybody would write that somebody said that, because it's just obviously clearly un untrue. Well, in fairness to those guys, there's a lot of confusion in, in the marketplace. Uh, there's a lot of nuance here. Uh, I, I would say that it, it's likely Fusion, uh, Seeking Alpha is a... Uh, is a site that uh, basically anybody can come in and, and write on, a lot of investors, and it very likely could have been a bear, an EMC bear, somebody who was short the stock, just wanted to try to keep driving it down, but uh, we don't know that okay. for sure, yeah. uh, who knows? I mean, it's, it's possible, yeah. but it, it really, it's, it's kind of inexplicable. But the, the real issue that I want to talk about, David, is some of the nuance here, because you basically, in your article, uh, called out EMC and said you were somewhat surprised that they spent so much time focusing on Company F, which of course stands for Fusion IO, uh, yep. your your commentary there was really around, if I can interpret it correctly, that Fusion IO plays in, in quite a bit of a different market. They go after the hyperscale market. They're they're really driving software innovation. And EMC's PCIe card and and all flash array are participating in a different market. Can you add some color to that and just clarify your statements there? Yeah, sure. I, there's, uh, in our forecast that we've done, we, we separate out storage into three groups. Uh, there's traditional disk-based storage, which will still be there in very large volume because it's much, much cheaper to, for capacity to store it on the hard disk. There's the flash-only arrays or flash-predominant arrays. Those are the ones that they announced with the it's Extreme I.O. And those r run on the same fans as uh, as as um, they do today, uh, they they are much faster, but they're down in the millisecond uh, area. Um, obviously, uh, uh, disk drives are down in the tens of milliseconds. These ones are down in the milliseconds. The the third area is server-based storage. Uh, traditionally, DAS as, as disk drives uh, can be SSDs as disk drives. But more and more PCIe cards directly on the bus are taking over that marketplace, being very, very close indeed to the server. And those are three very separate uh, marketplaces and three very separate architectures that applications can fit into. But now uh, EMC was showing benchmarks that very clearly showed that the, their product, their PCIe card, outperformed uh, Fusion IOs both in terms of IOPS and latencies. They had this kind of tongue-in-cheek uh, example where they were powering uh, 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 volts, a volt electric uh, vehicle with a Fusion IO card and an EMC card, and the EMC card out outraced the, the Fusion IO card. What do you make of those benchmarks? Well, Dave, you and I have been around benchmarks a long time. You know, in, in our days at IDC, if you remember, we were analyzing benchmarks on, on the Skyline from Hitachi and uh, IBM's LSPR and all sorts of things like that. So I've, I have a lot of experience uh, of doing those both as a living and as commentating on them. And, and there are two things about a benchmark which, uh, which are important. The first is, uh, that it's uh, reliable, that you can repeat it uh, in another place. And the second is that it's valid. It's actually measuring something that's useful. Uh, are these uh, particular benchmarks reliable? I, I strongly expect they are. Do they mean anything in the real, uh, real world that we, we're in deciding between cards? I'm not sure. I, don't, I think that when, when, when it all comes down to it, we'll find that 
a PCIe card used the way that they're using it. PCI card is a PCIe card. There'll, there'll be little ups and downs because of uh, technology refresh cycles. Um, there'll be uh, improvements people make in the software drivers, etc. Um, but uh, it, the uh, uh, the benchmark presented to me uh, asked more questions than they did give answers. So, so Where, let me ask you: was it done? Uh, what what software was used? What was the environment, etc.? And in in particular, they did a, an, an analysis saying, as a result of that, they were fifty eight percent more expensive. That that analysis is is invalid. They said who was fi who was fifty eight percent more expensive? The Fusion I O was fifty eight percent more uh, expensive. Yeah, yeah. sorry, uh, the EMC was fifty eight percent cheaper. So, yeah. Okay. Uh, so so, uh, so that that analysis they did on on the costing of that was was clearly. Uh, not done by experts in service. So, so that particular piece, in, in, in my view, uh, was an error. But the benchmark, they, they may be right, but still does it matter? Um, is it the right benchmark? Is it the, the right uh, work? Uh, time will tell. I suspect that it's a wash. Well, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll find that out. Well, so I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to follow up on that. So I, I should, in the, in the spirit of full disclosure, you're a you're very bullish on Fusion I.O. You have been for a number of years. You've written a I, lot about... I've talked, yeah, I've talked about Fusion I.O. I like that technology, uh, but but I'm a very straight shooter when it comes to benchmarks. And, uh, you know, you know the Oracle benchmark. Every, every Oracle benchmark says that they're twice as powerful as everything else on the planet, or three times more powerful. You also know that it, it's um, uh, not true. Uh, they, they have taken a benchmark and compared it with an inappropriate... Uh, uh, okay, so I, 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 you've written a lot about atomic rights, um, yeah. and, and in particular talked about how Fusion I.O. has software to enable that, and has done a lot of work in that area. Um, one of the points you've made is that atomic rights essentially uh, not only bypass the spinning mechanical uh, uh, the delays of physical disk, but they also uh, uh, basically reach around or eliminate the protocol, disk protocol issues like SCSI, which is a chatty protocol. You've made that point a number of times, and you've, you've said that that's delivers orders of magnitude, if not you know one or two orders of magnitude, greater performance. So um, I'm curious as to your comments just now about, well, time will tell, it's probably a wash. Do you believe that the, 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 the solutions are comparable from a performance standpoint? Well, uh, uh, what I was talking about there was if you use the same software on both sets of cards, and the software, uh, you know, appropriate. Let's say that uh, EMC has got the, an I, uh, 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 extreme uh, SW uh, product. If they tested it on on their the, their software, um, then it's reasonable to say uh, to compare the performances. You know, as long as the the uh, uh, microcode and everything else was set up correctly. Um, so that's one one use scenario. In that particular example, it would have been on caching software. So that's a benchmark for caching software. The other benchmarks, though, that Fusion IO have done have been due, do, for example, uh, a year ago, to do a benchmark which produced a billion IOs in a rack of eight servers, um, which is clearly uh, many, many, many times more powerful than the, the existing one. And they recently did a, a benchmark which showed that they could do 9 million per IOPS per second from a, from a car. From a single car, so, okay. From a single car. So, again, it, that doesn't mean it's 9 million times faster than, or, you know, 100,000 times faster than the uh, EMC card. It, it means a different environment. Um, and Fusion I.O. are focusing on this server marketplace. Their, their, their key marketplace is helping the uh, hyperscale people like Apple, like Facebook, like uh, uh, other um, large organizations of that sort. Um, and they're doing that by doing something called atomic rights. Uh, a lot of things. They're doing it with uh, some software, the VSL software, which provides a, a connection, a, a um, a virtualization of the uh, of the of the right spaces. Uh, they're doing it with uh, DirectFS, which is a Linux-based uh, file system, uh, which again uh, works with the DSL and works with the card. And they're doing it with the cards themselves. 
those three things uh, make up a little ecosystem. And in that environment, they, they, instead of having to write it using SCSI, they are writing it using uh, memory protocols, RDMA, directly to memory. And they can write that in 100 nanoseconds as opposed to a millisecond. And you said one or two orders of magnitude. That's four orders of magnitude uh, faster. Uh, and when you look at specific workloads where right latency is critical, those are the databases. So those are especially the big databases. The more complex that database, the, uh, the, the more that's going on, uh, the, the more you want to put into that database, the bigger it is, uh, the, the more the constraint on it is the locking rate and the constraint on locking rate from a technology point of view is I.O. performance, right I.O. performance specifically. Okay, so so let me interrupt you there because this is a complicated situation for a lot of people. So you're basically saying atomic writes allow you to directly write to the memory, correct? Bypassing, yeah. bypassing disk protocols, right? And that's delivering yeah. up to four, four orders of magnitude performance benefit. Correct. So my So my question is, can't EMC do... Uh, and others do atomic rights. Uh, uh, of course. Um, there are some uh, initiatives going on at SNEER um, uh, around uh, what's called NVMe, uh, around this area of uh, allowing uh, communication, direct communication between the uh, uh, processors uh, and, the, uh, and the flash. And Intel is behind that, correct? Intel is one of the big drivers of that, and clearly they are a, a, a flash uh, provider. So, uh, so why doesn't why doesn't Intel and their ecosystem, which is very well established and has a lot of money, yeah. why won't they just, you know, crush what Fusion I/O is doing? Why won't they just roll over Fusion I/O? <laughs> We've got to get it out first. We've got to get people to buy into it. The, the name of the game is: Can you get ISVs to buy into any particular way of doing it? Um, and the, the, uh, the, the biggest hurdle to adoption of this particular technology is adoption by the uh, ISV. So where is NVM? Uh, where is NVM in your opinion in terms of you know time to market? Well, if we talked about a furlong, uh, a furlong before, they're probably in the first five yards of that furlong. They're still in the starting gate, is what you're saying. They, <laughs> just, just out of the starting gate. And, you know, uh, I, uh, we, we, everybody wishes them well. Uh, it would be good for the industry, the better they do it. But uh, Fusion IO have been working on this for five years, uh, since 2009. So uh, they've got a head start. Now, you know, it, it would be great for the industry if, uh, if uh, NV, uh, uh, NVME uh, makes it out into the marketplace. But there's not even a... Not even a prototype. There's just talk. So how, how much of a lead does Fusion I.O. have, in your opinion? Uh, I don't know, two, three years. Um, uh, it, and it's, it's moving fast. And, and the, 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 uh, the, the uh, opportunity for Fusion I.O., if they, if they can get the... They, they already have got, for example, Pacona, uh, one of the uh, distributors of MySQL, uh, to to distribute a, um, a, a atomic write version, if they can uh, if they can get that in general adoption by by all of the database market and and, and the no SQL upcoming database market, um, they are going to have be in a very very strong position. Uh, now, obviously, ISVs will do more than one implementation, and adding on a second implementation isn't the, the end of the end of the world. But who, they will, to begin with, be using Fusion IO. Well, you, you mentioned MySQL and Percona, but doesn't doesn't Fusion IO have to get Oracle and 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 SQL Server from Microsoft? I mean, some of the the larger markets. Absolutely. Or, 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 uh, absolutely. But but you just imagine that now. Uh, MySQL o operates at twice the speed of, uh, of anything else with far less resources. Um, you're going to feel a bit of pressure in that marketplace, certainly uh, the Microsoft will. Okay, so uh, I want to come back to the EMC announcement. EMC basically indicated that it's no longer doing Thunder. What Thunder was, was a, if I understand it correctly, was a shareable, you know, protectable server-side flash uh, using PCIe, but a 
cluster-like capability, much more toward the direction, if I understand it correctly, that Fusion I.O. is going. First of all, is that correct? correct. And second of all, is, is my understanding correct that EMC is not, no longer pursuing Thunder? That's, uh, both of those statements are correct. Um, I, one of the ways I would describe it is, I mean, you've got the traditional SAN, and you've got a server SAN. It's a, it's a SAN which is, you know, using very, very high-speed interconnections, RDMA, it, uh, obviously clearly in a very small space. 100 nanoseconds is 100 feet uh, that light travels in. So you're, you're talking about extremely much smaller spaces, much more condensed environments. So you're talking about a, a totally different marketplace and different set of technologies than the traditional SAN to make this work. Okay, so it basically by, by uh, canceling Thunder, EMC has essentially said that we can attack that marketplace that, that, that Fusion is participating in with a combination of our PCIe cards and a combination of the, um, the Extreme I.O. all flash arrays. Now, if I look up your forecast uh, that you published back, actually back in 2011, and I think you've updated it, what you said is that you, you break, break it down in three categories, flash on server, flash only arrays, and then arrays, and I assume hybrids are included in that. And you have basically a very small proportion of the marketplace in terms of terabytes as the flash on server, 3%. But in fairness, you've got 20% of the spend. You've got most yep. of the spend in either the flash only arrays or the, the traditional arrays, almost uh, 80%, yeah, 80% of the market, 35% flash only, and 45% with the uh, arrays and the hybrids. So is, is that essentially your take on what EMC is saying, that they can compete, that that market really isn't big enough today, that Facebook and, and you know, Facebooks of the world are essentially uh, a, a, a niche and, and not the mainstream of EMC's market opportunity. Is that, do you believe that's a, a correct interpretation of EMC's position and do you agree with that position? I, I, I agree that it's a, 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 a good assessment of where, where EMC's mind is at the moment. Do I agree with it? No, uh, for, for two reasons. First of all, it's only 3% of the capacity, sure. I mean, the major amount of the capacity will still be on this, uh, but it's about 20% of the spend, uh, and that spend is at the leading edge, and it's high value, and the potential there is for very high margins. As you go down the stack, the margins you can make if you're doing a, just a standard disk drive are pretty small, very low indeed. You, you'll make more on the flash array, but the high end is where uh, the real uh, potential for margin is. Uh, in my view, in that marketplace. And, and, and that's exactly how EMC has gone about the market. They went into the tier one market. They went after the uh, IBM mainframe at the tier one level because of the, exactly those reasons. Yeah, you but feel as though that, that, high, that high value, that 20% is the database market, that's the high value market, and you feel like that's, that's critical for thought leadership and, 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 and margin leadership. Um, do you, you mentioned in your piece that this notion of what EMC is calling directed availability, you felt like that was a, uh, a tiptoe strategy to shield its VMAX business. Um, I'm not sure if EMC has commented uh, on that or not, but can you help us understand what you mean by that? You feel like Extreme I.O. is competitive in block-based environments to, to VMAX, correct? Uh, sure. Um, and, I mean, VMAX is a good product, and uh, they have uh, fast VP, which is tiered storage, which allows you to have direct flash towards specific applications. So it, it's, a, it's a good product, very uh, sound product. It's been out there obviously for a long time. It has very high margins uh, from the MC's point of view. Uh, so yeah, uh, they, they, uh, they don't want to, uh, for example, bring in Extreme I.O., find that it has not got a feature that's required, I mean, like for example, uh, replication, and then uh, see that the business is given to somebody else. So from a, from a practical point of view, uh, that's that's a reasonable thing to do. From a marketing point of, point of view, calling it directed, uh, directed uh, availability, uh, I think it's a little... Uh, you didn't like that term. But, but, uh, well, but, you know, I, it didn't, didn't serve that for us. So, okay, you know, but, I, but having said that, isn't this a case of EMC eating its own young before somebody else does? I mean, you got to give EMC props for actually going out, really? buying Extreme I.O. and positioning it, because now it can, it can control the transition of its customer base, can it not? 
Absolutely. I, I'm, I'm not uh, debating at all that they are going after this marketplace properly. And, and if they put the, the full wood behind this arrow, uh, get the pricing strategy correct, uh, they, as I said before, they can be in incredibly successful with this product. Okay, so just in summary, so you feel as though the EMC Extreme IO uh, announcement legitimizes the marketplace. You got the biggest whale in the sea now competing yep. for that space. You, you expect them to do very, very well. That was that was clear. But if I understand it correctly, you're not buying the Fusion IO knockoff. You feel like Fusion IO still has a lead, uh, and and it remains to be seen whether or not NVM and alternative approaches to Fusion I.O. can compete. At the same time, you're saying that Fusion I.O. has to move fast and sign up the ISVs and get them writing to their software development kit and their API. Is that right? That's correct, yes. All right, good. Well, David Floyer, thanks very much for hanging with us here. Uh, a lot of nuance here. You're a real expert in this area. Really appreciate you helping us squint through it. Uh, thanks for watching, everybody. This is Dave Vellante at Wikibon with David Floyer, uh, and we will see you next time.